For how much I love PC gaming, there's one tiny thing that really peeves me off. It's all the different game launchers. Ugh. <coughs> you buy a PC game and you'll have to download a specific launcher to install and launch the game. And your PC game library will be split over multiple launchers, as well as other inconveniences. There's almost a light version of the console wars going on, but it's PC launchers instead. It's not exactly the end of the world, but it's an annoyance that roasts me the wrong way. Petty? Hell yeah, but you know what you were getting into when you clicked the thumbnail. I originally did a video covering this a few years ago, but it's now out of date and surprisingly got views, so it makes sense for me to revise this. Since then we've got even more launches. Steam, Epic Game Store, Blizzard's Battle.net, Xbox App, Ubisoft Connect, Bethesda.net, GOG Galaxy, Amazon Games App, EA's Origin, Domino's App, wait, not that one, and a few other less common launchers. If we're including streaming, there's PlayStation Now and Stadia too. The voice chat service Discord originally got in on the games too, but later abandoned it in late 2019. So why do all these different launchers exist? It's because companies are trying to bypass the revenue split involved when selling through a physical computer game store or an external digital store like Steam. This revenue split is usually around 30-70, with 30% of a sale going to the game store or launcher, in exchange for promoting your game through advertising, selling your game, offering download servers, and hopefully many other bonuses, but a lot of games companies are wanting a bigger piece of the pie. Of course you don't need to run every launcher at once. Just the launcher linked with what game you want to play, your game's library is split across these different launchers. Sometimes a series of games is frustratingly across different launchers. I own the Assassin's Creed series on Steam, but the latest game is exclusive to Ubisoft Connect and Epic Game Store. And I own the remade Crash Bandicoot 1, 2 and 3 on Steam, but Crash Bandicoot 4 is now exclusive to Blizzard's Battle.net. Just a pain in the arse. Some companies are real sneaky and double up. They sell their game through a store like Steam, but still require you to use their launcher, like Ubisoft Connect or Origin. So you launch Steam, launch the game, which then launches Ubisoft Connect, that then launches your game, and you can then finally start playing your game. Meanwhile, at Ubisoft, we heard you like launching launchers, so we put a launcher inside your launcher, so you can launch a launcher when launching your game. At any point, one of these half-arsed game launchers can just terminate your account or shut down their service. That's what happened with Microsoft's games for Windows Live. Rest in peace, my digital copy of Age of Empires. Hello darkness, my old friend. My biggest issue with these different launchers is when the games have different multiplayer servers or versions on different launchers. Take Dying Light for example. I own a Steam copy of Dying Light and a friend owned a GOG copy. It was impossible to play together as they worked off different servers. This is a pretty uncommon problem these days, but it still happens with specific games. I've had a few issues with Age of Empires 2 also, with Steam and the Microsoft Store offering different patch versions of the game. My friends and I had our games up to date, it was just that one launcher was behind with the patches. This eventually got sorted out and the right patches were pushed through, but it did ruin a potential gaming night. So we're used to having one dedicated platform, Steam. This dominated PC gaming alone for just under 10 years. This is where most gamers have the majority of their digital PC games library. Steam itself has had nearly 20 years of developments. We've got achievement systems, cloud saving, a decent refund system, modding support, game forums, player made guides, friends lists, private game streaming to friends, remote play, dedicated custom controller support, cloud space for your screenshot library, the ability to write detailed reviews for items on the store, and so on and so on. You then buy a copy of Doom Eternal. Great game, but this key is specifically for the Bethesda.net launcher, which has next to none of these features. Depending on who you are, this can kind of harm your experience with a game. Maybe I'll have to install some third-party PlayStation controller drivers. Not that I'd play FPS with a controller, but you get my point. I'm somebody who enjoys earning achievements in games, and will play a game a little bit longer just to get that extra achievement. Bethesda.net doesn't support achievements. There's Neo Automata 2, where the Windows Store version has more updates, bug fixes and enhancements over the Steam version, but they're both labelled as exactly the same product. Worst case scenario with some games, you might not be able to play with friends who own the same game on a different launcher like the Dying Light example. I'll admit it was my own stupid mistake, but I accidentally bought the Witcher 3 expansion pack for GOG Galaxy when I thought I was purchasing a Steam copy. This GOG expansion pass was incompatible with my Steam base game, so I ended up having to get a refund. Speaking of GOG Galaxy, they offer part of a solution. Through GOG Galaxy you can add all your different game accounts and it will attempt to merge all of your game libraries and stats together. It will take care of loading another launcher discreetly in the background when you launch a game. It's pretty nifty and worth checking out. 
While the Epic Games Store are slowly working through their original features plan and roadmap, they've been throwing their Fortnite money at games companies to take their games off dedicated launches like Steam and instead make them exclusive to the Epic Games Store in a pretty dick move. There's been a few instances where Epic Games Store have instead bought out entire games companies and funded entirely new game developments. At least funding new developments is the better way to go. But I swear if the Epic Games Store manages to get exclusivity to Elden Ring or Final Fantasy VII Remake instead of Steam, oh, heads will roll. So playing Devil's Advocate, are there any advantages to be found with all the annoying launchers? It's really just the competition. We see the Epic Games Store offering big discounts and free games, while other launchers have been implementing more features like achievements and mod support. Competition has also drove Steam to lower its selling fees with larger games that sell really well, meaning more money for the games companies and developers. My suggested solution for this whole thing would be to simply offer your games on multiple launchers or platforms and make sure the games work across multiple different launchers, looking at you dying late. This is something a few games companies have been doing recently, including Microsoft and EA, who now offer their games in multiple places now, and I'd personally be okay with paying a tiny bit more to get a game on my preferred platform. There are loads of other problems with gaming, and bigger problems with the world. The launcher was is just a small peeve of mine, but I can't be alone. Thanks for hearing me out. Peace.